how to get perfect faces in AI images. Hello, my friends. How are you doing today? I want to show you a method and I'm a little bit proud to say that that I developed for a friend. Now I do photography also myself. And one thing I can guarantee you is that the model is never going to be happy with the AI face because there are subtle differences. It just doesn't look completely like them. But also there's another thing that is important for artistic purposes. AI simply cannot create an expressive face and cannot create these subtleties that a human face has in the expression. So for example, things like and uh, and stuff like that with an AI, you can forget about that. So with this method, well, I'm not creating the face, I'm keeping the face. And I have created this for automatic 1111 and then a much simpler method for comfy UI. Let's check that out. So first, let's have a little look at the image. So here we have a beautiful face. It's not abstracted, but you can see it has a very beautiful expressive smile. This little subtleties in there, just amazing. Okay, now here is one thing. Down here we have this little fashion detail which is very beautiful, but it is not so great for AI rendering. So you might want to paint that out because it can hinder the automatic face detection a little bit and create a little bit of an edge in the image afterwards. Also, what you want to keep in mind is that AI still is not great with complex hand postures. So maybe find a posture where you have no hands or the hand postures are simple enough so the AI can recreate that. So as you can see here in the second, version, I have removed that little fashion accessoire here within painting in Affinity Photo very simple. So now that we have prepared our image, we're going to go over to automatic 1111 first. Of course, you write your prompt and your negative prompt you describe you want to have in the scene. And we're going to load the image into in painting. That is very important. Now you want to mask the face, maybe even a little bit around the face, but stick closely to the face. Very important next step, scroll down here. You want to turn on for the mask mode in paint, not mask. This means it will in paint everything but the mask. Then of course, mask content original, in paint area only mask. Select your sample method and the step count that is perfect for the model you want to use. Down here, I'm setting the same resolution that I have for the photo. I'm not using a high resolution for a photo because that can actually break your AI rendering. There might not be enough RAM to actually do that. So I have here a smaller resolution of 800 by 1200, but you can upscale afterwards, no problem. Now here for the denoise strength, I'm going very high with in this case 0.89 you can go even higher experiment with that to give me a better result for my image i'm using two control nets now the first control net i'm using is open pose and i'm using it with a control net weight of one in this case and then the second one is going to be depth and i'm going to using that with only 0.35 you might want to experiment with that depending on how complex the body pose is but also how much you want to cover or bring over from the other photo. Then we are off to the rendering and you might want to create multiple versions to see what is the best and play a little bit around with the settings. Now in the first step, there is a little bit of a caveat and that is that in automatic 1111, the skin color of the person often does not match the exact color of the skin in the face of the original image. Now for that, I have a second step for you. So you want to click down here on this palette icon to send it again to in painting. Now what we're doing in here now in the second step is we are going to mask only the eyes. Why only the eyes? Well, the reason for that is human eyes are very expressive. They are the gate to the soul and they have very subtle details. You cannot create that in a nice way that is feeling human in AI. So you want to mask out the eyes so you keep the original eyes still. And then we have the same settings down here, but 
Here is the big difference. We are going to set the denoise strength to 0.01, the lowest possible value. And what this is doing, as you can see, is that it's rendering the exact same image again, but the color of the face now is closer to the body color. So here we have the image from before. You can see here we have a red edge and a red face. And this is a new version where we have a face that is closer to our body color. Now you can try to set the denoise a little bit higher. You can also re-render that multiple times to get different colorations of that face to see where it perfectly matches for you. There's a little bit of experimentation involved. Of course, as a last step, you want to send this over to your upscaling and then you want to set here your upscaler of your choice and you can even use GFP again and code former, but use it very slightly so it doesn't change the face too much. And then you simply upscale it to any size you desire. Now, my friends, that was an automatic 1111. As you can see, it's a little bit cumbersome. You have to jump between different settings and between different tabs. So how can we actually automate everything of that? You can do that in ConfUI. And of course, my Patreon supporters and my YouTube membership supporters get that workflow tonight as a free download. Let's check that out. All right, so here we are in ConfUI. You can see I beautifully prepared everything for you in different areas so you know exactly what is going on. Let's start here on the left. You can see here we are loading the image and then I'm applying two different control nets. Again, the depth map and the open pose. We have here a preview for both. And in here, in this area for apply control net, you can see that you can adjust here the weight or the strength that each of these control nets has. And I actually will rename these so you know which is depth and which is the open pose. Now this is then going into our prompting over here. So here you set the positive and the negative prompt. You're choosing in here your model and your VAE. And then this is going here into the next part. And here I'm using face detailer, but I'm not using it to detail the face to make it better. I'm only using the masking function. So for that, I'm tracking the face automatically. And then we're going to invert the mask in here. And down here, you can see a preview where we have only the face tracked. Beautiful. Now this goes into two case samplers. In the first case sampler, we are rendering the image. As you can see here, we're using a high denoise of 0.89. This is also using both the control nets, as you have seen before. And this is the version we get. Now here, you can see inside of ConfUI, the face color of the face and the body both match perfectly. For some reason here, it works right away. And that is really nice. So at that point, you might wonder why am I doing a second case sampler here? Well, it is called face color merge. So it is still adapting the face color a little bit to the rest of the body. But then also we are rendering over everything again to get a little bit of a better detail. In this case, I'm using a denoise of 0.14. Here on the right side, we have a preview of this result. But of course, we are not done yet because we want to have the best quality. So over here, everything is automatically going into an upscaler. You can, of course, choose your upscaling method. In my case, I'm using the 8x NMKD Super Scale 150,000. I'm doing a little bit of image sharpening after the upscaling. And down here, you have the beautiful finished result. And you can see it is very nice, high quality, high resolution, just mwah fantastic. And here you can see both faces side by side. As you can see, it's the same face, beautiful quality, and it looks superhuman because it is the real face. I really love this method. If you're one of my YouTube supporters, check out the membership tab on my YouTube channel. And if you're a Patreon supporter, I'm going to mail out to you. And also you have an exclusive post for you where you can download my ConfUI workflow and also some extra information about the models and upscalers I'm using. Thanks for watching, my friends. Leave a like if you enjoyed this content and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.